Hey folks, this is Cindy. Thanks so much for stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing a really quick Copic colored card with you. I really just wanted to sit down and do some fairly quick Copic coloring and just to enjoy the process of coloring. I haven't been able to do that a whole lot lately and I really love it when I can get back to it. It kind of helps me uh, kind of get my creative muse back in gear, so to speak. So this is the Studio Kadi uh, Japanese peony stamp set and I am in love with this. I love how large this bloom is. As you could see on my card, it pretty much filled up a good portion of that card panel and I love it. Another reason why I enjoy this stamp set is because, because of its size. When you take a stamp this large, it's a really good opportunity to A, just enjoy the process. You don't have to worry about too many fine details. Plus, it's really excellent for practicing because because you don't have to worry about those fine details. So let's take a look at this card here. I have a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock. This is 80 pounds. I have it cut down to four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. And I have it in my Misty stamping tool. So because the stamp is so large and I have a place pretty much right there in the center. I hadn't decided how I was going to finish this off, but I decided I'd just put it right there in the middle and then I'd go from there. I am using Alta News Permanent Black Ink because this is a Copic friendly ink. And this is also, this ink is is really great folks I really enjoy this I've used this a couple times and I'm definitely gonna start bringing it out more I am also I also stamped this uh, twice to make sure that I had a good solid image and then I just pulled out Copic so what the first thing that uh, my eye was drawn to in my container where I store my Copics is what I decided I was gonna color this in with I didn't put any other thought outside of that the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to map this out with my R22 and I am just mapping out where the petals themselves curve, uh, whether they curve up and down or whether they curve up and out. That is where I want my shadows to go. So I'm just going to map this out with the R22. And then once I have that mapped out, I can move on. Again, this is one of those images that because it is so large, it gives you a lot of real estate to practice in. If you uh, struggle with uh, Copics, if you struggle with uh, techniques, if you struggle with how you should hold your hand when you're making certain lines, these type of Im images, this one and, and others like this, this is a really good option option for you. Stamp a whole bunch of them and practice, practice, practice. That's, that's really the key to this. So once I have the R22 mapped out, I'm going to bring in my R39. That is going to be my darkest shadow color. And if you may notice there that on some of those petals that fold up and over, I'm making sure that I leave a little bit of a highlight there at the bottom. So I go a little ways up, then I uh, draw in my lines there, and then I'll start blending out from there. That white space is pretty important because you want it, you don't want uh, too many dark lines next to each other, and you'll kind of see that more as I finish this up. Now, I do apologize that some of this is off the screen. I wasn't paying attention while I was coloring this in. And also, I had my girls here in my craft room hanging out with me, and we were listening to music. So you can't tell because I have this sped up. But I was kind of jamming a little bit while I was coloring this in. And I went off screen quite a few times because I wasn't paying attention. But I will get it back in there here just shortly. So I have my R39, and this is, again, my darkest shadow color. And I'm just going going over the top of that R22 because that R22 was just a map. I am also adding a little bit more in areas that I hadn't mapped out previously, but now that I'm starting to add some of that color in and I can see start, start seeing some of the definition of those petals, I can bring a little bit of that in in other areas and then I can blend it out later. Once I'm done with this R39, I am going to bring in an R29 now. I am absolutely ridiculous with the amount of markers that I used on this, but because it is large, I can do that. If it, if this would had been smaller, I definitely wouldn't have brought in so many colors. It was totally unnecessary, but I really love this combination of red, so I definitely take advantage of that whenever I can. 
So I'm just going to go back in with the R29 here or go in with the R29 here. And then I'm just stretching those lines out just a little bit more from what I had done with the R39. And then once I'm done with this, I'm going to bring in the R27. I am also making sure that I'm adding this R29 to areas that I, again, hadn't previously colored. So where those petals fold up and over themselves, um, where it's kind of curved there, I do add a little bit of the R29 there. So as this, uh, as I start to finish this off, it does get lighter. I'm also making sure that I leave the majority of this peony pretty light there in the center. I am giving myself a lot of white space because as you're looking down in the peony, if, if you imagine a light source in there, it would be lighter in there. And then everything that is curling into itself or over itself would actually have the shadow. Another thing that I really like about this uh, peony is it would lend really well to different types of color mediums. Now, you could definitely do this in watercolor. That would be gorgeous. And I have seen this done in watercolor. I also think that if you were to uh, stamp this on craft cardstock and color it in with colored pencils, that would be gorgeous as well. Or you could even stamp this on a dark colored cardstock like a black or a navy and color that in. I think a navy with a pink peony would just be gorgeous. All right, so after I was done with the R27, I went in a little bit with the R24, stretched those lines out just a little bit more, and now I'm going to cover up all of my white space here that I had saved with my R22, and I am literally, literally just scribbling this on. I'm really not paying attention uh, for the most part of what direction that I'm going. I'm just getting that color on there because I am going to bring back in the R24 again a little bit to kind of uh, stretch those mids out just a teensy bit more. And then I'm also going to be bringing in a C5 and I'm going to be going in to the nooks and crannies of this uh, flower and just adding a little bit more depth. Now you could definitely do this with your R39, um, but I like using a C5 on reds. I think that it adds just the right amount of depth to it and it doesn't get lost in all of that red. So I'm just making sure I get in those nooks and crannies. I am not stretching that out in any way. I don't need to do that. I just want to get the depth in there. And I'm actually not even going to put a whole lot of effort into that. I could probably have given it a little bit more attention. But again, this was just simply about being able to enjoy the process of sitting down and coloring in this gorgeous flower. So I really just didn't do that. The other thing I'd like to note is that petal that is right down there by my left hand, how it, it uh, folds out like that. I actually could have done a little bit better job with my lines there. They're kind of, um, they don't blend very well. But by the time I noticed that, the card was already done and I thought, whatevs, we're just going to call it a day. Okay, now that the flower is done, I am going to start coloring in these leaves and I'm going to start with the YG61 and I'm just mapping that out. This is the same principles I did with the flower as I do with all of my images. I map it out with my lightest. I come in with my darkest. In this case, we're looking at the G29 here and I basically just go right over the top of everything I did with the YG61. It pretty much just looks like a Christmas tree and then I also realized that I missed a little petal there so I go back in and fix that really quick and then I get to back to my leaves here. Now I have a YG17. These greens really aren't a part of a particular blending family. I know they work together and I just grabbed them real quick and called it good. Um, you could use any green that you would like. This was just what I wanted to use on my leaves. So once I had the YG17 uh, in there, I didn't quite like how that was blending out just yet. So I'm bringing in the YG63 and I stretched that out just a little bit more. I did leave myself some highlight there. And then I'm going to go in with the YG61. If you notice, I'm actually going from the edges of pedal edges of the petals towards the center. I don't actually blend anything out in the center because I don't need to. It looks just fine. And also, I want to keep that variation in there that I had built up with the Copics. I do take a Y38 there in color in the center of it. I didn't like that, so I went in with a Y08. I still wasn't terribly happy with it, but I decided to leave it that way for now because I actually decided I, there was something else I could do with it. 
Okay, so to finish this off, I decided that I was going to go to my my go-to trick here and I was going to create a faux border. As it was when I went over to my container with all of my dies in it, the W plus 9 scallop border die just happened to be uh, what was up front there. So I decided that I was just going to use that. And I actually love this border die, folks. I've used this in the past. It is one of my faves. I did trace that with a pencil first to make sure that it was I had everything even and straight. And one once I had that done, I did come in, with, come in with an EK Success journaling pen and went over the top of that to make my lines permanent. Now I'm going to add a drop shadow. If you follow me, you've probably seen this before. If not, then this is probably new to you. And this one is probably one of my laziest drop shadows I've ever done because I really, really folks, I just wanted to color. So I started with my C3. Then I'm going to bring in my C5. This is my darkest color. And I kind kind of have ish a light source. It, I guess it's in the top right because my angle, the angle of my faux border is going from the top right down to the lower left. So I decided to do a top right drop shadow, but it's pretty loose. I mean, I didn't pay attention to it a whole lot. Once I had that C5 in there, I came back with the C3 and started blending that out. Now I have the C1 and I'm going to blend that out a little bit further. Now, as I go along, the more I'm going to hold my Copic off to the side. When I first started out, I was holding it pretty much straight up and down. But as I go lighter, I make sure to make sure that I'm tilting it just a little bit more than the previous color so I can get a good blend on that. After the C1, I'm bringing in the C00. And then to get rid of any of those super harsh lines, I always come in with a colorless blender. Again, if you follow me, you'll know that I don't care that much for a harsh line on my drop shadow. I like it to be a little bit smoother. If that doesn't bother you, then definitely skip this part, but this is something that I always do. Now that the drop shadow is done, I'm going to start adding the finishing touches to this. And I have the Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Clear Glitter Gloss Pen as usual. And I had a boatload of that in the bristles because I really, really wanted this to be super sparkly. I have a Secura Black Jelly Roll Pen and I'm just going to go around my image and add dots where I would like them. And then I also took a Secura Yellow Jelly Roll Pen and I went over the center of that peony there and I liked that a lot better. Now to make the stamen stand out just a teensy bit more on the inside of this peony, I am also going to use the Secura Black Jelly Roll Pen on that as well. And I'm just kind of faking it. I can see a few of the, the dots of the stamen from the stamped image, but I wanted to add a little bit more. So I'm just kind of filling that in wherever I think it needs to be filled in. And then I'm just going to call that good. I had this mounted to a top folding note card and I also stamped the image, uh, I'm sorry, the sentiment from the stamp set. It's just the simple thanks on there with W plus nine black dye ink. I love that ink. It's always crisp and pure the first time. And that's it. I'm going to call it good. You could totally finish this off with embellishments if you would like, but I just, this is probably hands down one of my favorite cards to do. I could do these by the ton. They're straightforward, they're really easy, they still make a lot of impact, and I just think they're wonderful. All right, folks, we are done. We are good to go. I have more details and links down in the description below as well as over on my blog. I hope you enjoyed my card today. If you did, hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and tap that bell next to the subscribe button so you can receive all future notifications. Thanks again so much for stopping by. Until next time.